Hey guys, welcome to Cosplay Life. I'm Air Bear, and today we are going to be working on step four of the foam armor making process, which is dremeling and heat forming. If you want to see the previous steps, check in the description box for a link to those videos. Other than that, if you want to see how I dremeled and heat formed this thing, stay tuned. The materials you need are scissors, safety goggles, these are over the glasses safety goggles. A Dremel with sanding drums or heads or thingies and three different grits. 60, 120, and 240 are the ones that I'm using. Oh, sanding bands, that's what they're called, sanding bands. I also use a paintbrush, painter's tape, but that's Lovebug's hand. Hey, Lovebug's hand. And a particle mask, which I know is probably hard to come by right now. So my Dremel came with a little box of basic accessories. It also came with a screwdriver tool to change out the Dremel pieces. It took me forever to figure out how to change them, so I will keep this part in so you can see how to do it. So I used the coarse grit for this first pass to get the material in the right shape. I used 60 grit, but there are other options. Anything from 40 to 60 grit is considered coarse. I always make sure my Dremel is unplugged before I change the grits because I don't want to Dremel my fingers away. Side note! So if you're watching these videos in order, you're going to notice that I'm going to Dremel the top and bottom trim in this video even though I glued it down in the previous video. That's because part of my design required me to Dremel it before I glued it on to the base. In order to make this video easier for beginners to follow, we wanted to keep all the gluing things in one video and all the dremeling things in another video. So you're gonna see me dremeling things that are already glued. But keep in mind, the dremeling on this part and on this part happened before we glued it. That's all. Back to the video. So this first pass of 60 grit is just to get the material into the right shape. I'm working on rounding the top edge, so I dremel back and forth in order to take the material away. I've heard people say to only dremel in the direction that the dremel is spinning, which first of all, how in the world do you figure that out? It's spinning so you can't see it, but if you let the dremel sit gently on the foam, it will tend to roll in a certain direction. The direction it rolls in is the direction that you're supposed to dremel in. Also, I just discovered that there's an arrow on my dremel that tells me what direction it rolls in. But I find that only going one direction takes a lot more time. I do the one direction thing when I'm smoothing the shape that I already created. And I create that shape by moving back and forth with the coarse grit on the first pass. Oh, and I keep the Dremel on the low setting for all the Dremeling that I do. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom edge of the top trim. So first, I hold the Dremel at a 45 degree angle and do short back and forth strokes to take down the corner. Then I start going over any other lines I see until I have a rounded edge. Next, I move on to my second pass with the medium grit, which is 120 grit. But medium is considered anything between 80 and 120. I want to start smoothing the shape I created, so I move in one direction with the Dremel. The inside corners have always been really difficult for me. It may just be that I'm not using the right tool or technique. If I figure out a better way to do it, I will share that with you all. Actually, if you have a suggestion for smoothing corners like this, let me know in the comment section. I'm still learning too. For a while I had a Dremel and I felt like I couldn't get the same results I saw other cosplayers getting, but I kept practicing with it and eventually I became more comfortable with it. I think the things that most helped me get better at Dremeling were the following. One, using three different grits. Two, realizing that the Dremel is not gonna burn my fingers off. 
I used to wear these really thick gloves when I dremeled to protect my hands, but I couldn't handle the foam properly while wearing them. Then eventually I just started touching it to see how much it would hurt if it did accidentally hit me. I decided that it was something that I can endure and I wasn't afraid of being hit by it anymore. <laughs> Good thing because... Yeah, it happens. Three, practicing and being okay with whatever I was able to do. Yeah, my seams and my edges may not be as smooth as other cosplayers, but it was better than what I had been doing originally. If you're just getting started, maybe those things can help you too. So the second pass helps to take away the rough edges left by the first coarse grip. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Okay. Unplug and then we're going to do one more pass. Next, I get the Dremel ready for the third pass with the 240 grit. The third pass with the fine grit makes it really smooth. And if you make any mistakes where you accidentally cut the foam with the Dremel, you can smooth it away with this grit, usually. Once I got my pieces as smooth as I wanted them, I glued them down to the base of the gauntlet. I did that in a previous video. Check the description box for a link for that one. And now that it's all glued together, it's time to Dremel the rest. Wait, I know what you're thinking. Hey, in the last video, you told us not to glue the felt. Why did you glue it? Because I was foolish, that's why. I glued the felt down too early and I was hoping to keep you all from following down my dark, dark path. Don't glue it yet. It's a mistake. I start by cutting off the excess scales. The first time around the gauntlet, I dremel at a 90 degree or perpendicular angle in order to make all the edges flush. Oh, and this is the first pass. So just like the other pieces, I will use the 60 grit now and use higher grits with my other passes. So now I'm dremeling the top edge. So this edge needs to go from a 90 degree angle to a sharp point at the very center of the top of the gauntlet. I should have curved it first so I could see it in its final form. As you'll see, I'll make a bunch of mistakes. So for now, I keep dremeling away. Next, I move on to the bottom edge, which has an easier angle to dremel. So I don't know if this actually helps anything, but I brush the Dremel off because it just makes me uncomfortable having that much like fine dust getting sucked back into the Dremel. I feel like it's something that could possibly break it or cause it to overheat. So I just use a brush and I brush out the little Dremel bits. But I've never actually seen anyone else do that, so it may just be me. Next. I move on to the second pass with the 120 grit and just start smoothing out the shape. So I'm having to cut because I dremeled the top edge at the wrong angle and made it too thin. If only I had curved it, all of this would have been easier. Hey oh, look who finally decided to fold it into the shape. And here goes the final pass. So 
so much better when you curve it. So much easier. It's ridiculous. Just keep dribbling until you are satisfied with your work. Yeah, I'm just gonna quit. I'm not doing anything. Look at all these little tiny slivers. So when it comes to heat forming, I use a heat gun on a medium setting. The temperature is cool enough for me to hold the foam, but not comfortably, if that helps you understand the temperature that I keep it at. If you have the heat gun too hot or too close to the foam, it will form a weird warp texture which I think means you probably burned it. First, I go ahead and warm up the front and the back of the foam. Because the trim is thicker, I'm making sure to get those areas warm. On the top part of the trim, I'm also working to open up those cuts that I made earlier. The heat gun will open up any little cuts that you have. The heat gun kind of melts the foam, so it contracts the foam where there's cuts to make the cuts appear larger, but it also kind of melds it all together on the back where the Dremel was going. Now that I have it warmed up, I roll the gauntlet into the shape that I want it. I heat form it to a smaller diameter than what it needs to be in its final shape. That way, if it loosens up any, it will still fit me. and I let it sit in this shape until it is completely cool. I use tape to hold the gauntlet in the shape. I like painter's tape because stronger tapes may rip the foam once I try to remove it. I think because I had felt, it made it less likely to keep the heat form shape. Another reason not to put felt on until later. probably should have cleaned it more than I did. That would probably explain the texture I get when I spray paint it later. And when it cools, it'll hold on to a shape and look like this. Except without the paint. That is another step. So that about does it for how I dremeled and heat formed this thing. If you wanna see the next step in the cosplay foam armor making process, which is priming and possibly painting, it depends on how long the video is, whether or not we're gonna throw in painting. But if you wanna see that video, make sure you hit subscribe and click on the notification bell so you can get a notification when we release whatever that video is. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you all next time. And real quick, okay, so. I added on these knobby thingies. I added this one doesn't have knobby thingies. I don't know which one to choose. So don't look at the color. I want you guys to vote, but don't look at the color of them because both of them are going to be this color. This one was just spray painted. This one I did a little bit more. You'll see. You'll see in the next video what all I did. But yeah, I don't know which one I like better. I may need to see the whole costume together in order to get a good feel, but I want to know what you guys think. Do you like the little knobby knobs or no knobby knobs? Deuces!